Well, good day, uh, maybe good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're listening to this. Kind of a cloudy day outside. I'm recording this actually on Wednesday morning, fresh off the annual meeting last night here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thanks for attending, those of you who were here in person or joining us online. I'm excited about the year ahead. And this Sunday, the Bible study that I'm doing for Sunday, January, uh, January 30th, I've kind of handpicked some texts that I have a great love for and uh, I can get some passion about in terms of our study today. So let's take a look at those. But before so, uh, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, wherever we are today, we know that you are present among us. We're all individuals with individual gifts, but we are the community and we come together today around your word and ask your Holy Spirit to enlighten us and to uh, guide us throughout this week. And uh, we'll do that one day at a time with your presence among us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So here are the texts that I'm going to use. We are going to be emphasizing in the next few weeks the stewardship of our lives. And uh, these texts are some of my favorites. Um, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12 we'll look at. Um, I've always, again, carried this deeply in my heart. And as we read it through, I'm sure it'll become a favorite of yours as well. In Acts, of course, the history of the early church in those days when the disciples in Antioch were first called Christians. We'll visit that in Acts chapter 11. And, of course, the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel, which has always been a guide for the future of the church and the present. So we will look at that as well. All right, open up your Bibles. Let's take a look at Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. The word of the Lord. Sometimes when I'm praying with people, when they're in a time of need, I come to a psalm like this, which reminds us uh, to never forget God's benefits, even in times of great trouble and distress. For God, as it says in the book of Romans, is not against us, but God is for us. And it talks about how we are filled with God's forgiveness for all of our sins, our iniquity, who heals our diseases. And sometimes those are not just physical, but uh, struggles we carry in our minds and, and emotional issues. Um, who redeems our life from the pit. Um, I don't know what kind of imagery you want to pick up there, but... I remember when Joseph was thrown in the pit by his brothers in, in the book of Genesis, right? Um, but here's this being crowned with the phrase that is always present in the Psalms, the steadfast love and mercy of God. And uh, we are renewed uh, each and every day, renewed like the eagles. Think of the song on eagles' wings. You know, I'm not going to be a preacher with you right now. I'm going to just say, observe what is here in this text. Because uh, the Lord struggles with injustice and those people who are living in deep, dark, oppressed times. Um, of course, Moses and the people of Israel knew that, didn't they? This refrain that I carry with me a lot is the reminder that God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And I'm sometimes even angry with myself. So I have to come back and realize that God is merciful and does not repay us according to our sins, nor according to our iniquities. But here it is again, reminded that as the heavens are high above the earth, this steadfast love is higher than we can even imagine. 
And I love verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. So think of this every Sunday when we gather in worship and think about our confession that the absolution of God is just uh, absolutely, as we would say, amazing grace. Let's turn now to the book of Acts chapter 11, and I am going to start reading at verse 19. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. So check out your Bible maps. This is just a simple one to let you know that we're talking about Antioch, which was north of Jerusalem. Uh, northeast there on the uh, off the Mediterranean Sea and right alongside is Tarsus to the uh, west just a bit that is where Paul came from uh, of course Saul before he became the Apostle Paul and uh, the landscape then is where eventually the early church where they were called Christians uh, the movement was a major movement out of Antioch with Paul's missionary journeys just a brief sketch here because you need to go back and read the book of Acts and remember it's the history of the early church. By the time you get to chapter 6, uh, you'll find out that the first martyr of the church was Stephen. And uh, from that point on, there, on, there was uh, people spreading out after that persecution. And here's some of the cities listed. But in a yellow, notice Antioch. And it was here that uh, the Hellenists, these were Greek-speaking Jews, uh, began to proclaim the Lord Jesus, and uh, a great number of them started to uh, turn their lives into this relationship with Christ. So there, there's a, a turning point, and, and this area becomes really a, a crossroads of many people from many different backgrounds. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit on Sunday. But uh, onto the scene comes Barnabas. He comes to Antioch, and notice it says, verse 23, when he came, he saw the grace of God, he rejoices, exhorts them to remain faithful to the Lord. And there's a little bio here. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. He brought many to the Lord. But now he's going to team up with Saul, who eventually is called Paul. See chapter 13, verse 9. And Paul and Barnabas will set out with missionary journeys from Antioch. So it is, it is a, a beginning of the uh, movement uh, of the gospel really to the ends of the earth. And uh, make note that in Antioch, the first time that the disciples were called Christians. Okay, we'll talk more about that on Sunday. Okay, let me read the Great Commission from Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 and following. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Well, here it is in print, the end of Matthew's gospel, right after the resurrection of Jesus, where the 11 disciples go with him to the mountaintop, and he redirects them, of course, with 
uh, the realization that there is still some doubt in the community and perhaps among the disciples themselves, right? But then this statement that only Jesus can make, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And so we baptize, one of the sacraments of the church, of course, baptism comes from this command where Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now hear that, all nations, all nations, uh, baptizing in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, of course, we are to teach and uh, call to obedience in terms of this uh, this blessing that's been placed upon us, and perhaps that greatest blessing is to remember that Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. Emmanuel, God with us. Well, let me have a little fun here. We had a great annual meeting last night, and I'm going to reflect again on what's happened here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I think we've been following this great commission of Jesus, but also that movement of the early church when it says in the book of Acts in the first chapter, that they would receive power, and at that point the disciples would become witnesses in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So we've had some movement in our community as well, and let me just touch on that for a bit. Well, the history of Emmanuel Church goes back to 1958. Here we are in 2022, and we are poised to move forward. Our mission statement, a Christ-centered community where God's Spirit transforms, guides our lives as we worship, learn, love, share, and serve. This is a strong statement of our mission that we've had for many years. By the time you come into Emmanuel Lutheran Church, you realize that we're one church and multiple communities. We have our downtown location here, and here also is Emmanuel Community Church, which is a multicultural community, a great place to visit and, and belong. Uh, please go out to the park to the northeast, about 35 miles as the crow flies right, out near Ava Maria, and you'll find Emmanuel Park as a new community. And then we have two nonprofits, uh, Manual Academies, raising up pastors for the 21st century church, and Emmanuel Communities, which is going to broaden our resources with partners from uh, Southwest Florida. I love this slide because it takes us all the way back to 2008, where even then we were imagining that we might become a place that was like a conference center where we would gather people from all around to nurture spiritual, emotional, and intellectual growth, uh, a mission post, if you will, for congregations, and a place that we might develop a new generation of church leaders. And all of that is happening in this place. And then in 2009, we had an innovative ministry conference at Emmanuel Lutheran Church where we brought in people from around the country in the Lutheran tradition, colleges, universities, seminaries, and also social service agencies to dream together of what the future might bring. At that conference, we discovered that this mission center was a real possibility here in Southwest Florida, a multicultural context, multi-faith, and here we could work with spiritual development and partnerships, not only with uh, other congregations, but with community organizations. And yes, even come to that day when we would develop leadership for the 21st century church, and that's what we call here Emmanuel Academies. It was so exciting when our church was able to move from the downtown location and begin to spread out into northeast Collier County in what was then called the town of Big Cypress, that development at least, now it's rural lands west. And here we have what we call Emmanuel Park alongside the town of Ava Maria. And uh, this is an example of what we're going to be doing in the future as we develop uh, this ministry with so many in our community. So you see, I can't help but think about this landscape of the Apostle Paul's missionary journeys. Because when I look at this and how it got framed out around the Mediterranean, uh, we can see some similarities when we look at our present context. It may not be the Mediterranean, but it's the Caribbean and uh, Central and South America. And we have a lot of outposts in our congregation's ministries extending from our location here in Naples, Florida. And here's what it looks like in part. These little dots are representative of our congregational members that are a part of Emmanuel Lutheran. And we give thanks to Pastor Jose Lebron that joined us uh, over eight years ago from the Dominican Republic. And our whole staff is working together to ensure that the 
future of our congregation is strong. So I'm very thankful, and I know you are as well, that we're living out the Great Commission here that we'll talk again on Sunday about. And I, I hope and pray that our congregation will continue to be blessed in the future with all of us working together here as the body of Christ. Well, thank you for joining me for a few minutes to kind of have a little chance to reflect on mission. And uh, this coming Sunday, we'll start our stewardship campaign. Watch your mail because you'll be receiving one of these brochures on the growing faces of Emmanuel as we celebrate one church in multiple communities. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you again this day and grant you peace. Take care. We'll see you Sunday. Pastor Steve signing off. Bye-bye.